Is your sleep setup helping you or not? That's today's topic. I will be talking about my personal sleep setup. Over the years, I've developed a little routine I call my sleep setup that has helped me be able to uh, get better sleep, sleep deeper. Now, I'm not saying this is perfect. I'm not saying it's going to work for everyone, but I'm going to give you guys my personal uh, version of my sleep setup. I would encourage you guys to look into a bit more detail as far as what is your sleep setup, what works best for you, but for me, this is what works best. Now, I think I've got about 10 or 11 things here. I wrote them down to make sure that I get them all out. Otherwise, I will mumble my way through it. It's not fun at all. But uh, the biggest and most important one for me is the time period, the time frame. So from 11 p.m. until 5 a.m. I think it's this way on the camera. Uh, is the most important time for you to be able to be asleep. This is number one for me, the most important part. 11 p.m., 5 a.m., asleep, not in bed, not falling asleep, asleep. You don't get those hours, that part of that regenerative sleep, uh, you don't get them back. You don't get them by sleeping those six hours during 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. Did I get that right the first time? It's in the night time, 11 p.m. until 5 a.m. The most important one. That's number one. Uh, number two is adding nothing to your list. Now, most people live their days with a to-do list. For me, it's adding the word nothing to your to-do list. There must be a time there where you literally do nothing as part of the plan. The most important thing outside of the time frame of sleeping is to add nothing to your sleep. Uh, sorry, to your list. Number three, no caffeine after I say 2 p.m. I personally do 12 p.m. But I say 2, 2 p.m. Is, is, is by far the last time. Most people are going to sleep a little later than I am. So for me, it's 12. Uh, I will randomly go outside of that, but very, very, very uh, randomly. So I say outside, two, after 2 p.m., no more caffeine, no more coffee, no more tea. If your tea contains, contains, contains caffeine, no more. Uh, what are we up to? Number four. Social media, uh, catching up with Facebook, on your phone, all this kind of stuff, it stimulates the brain in a way that is not good for you. It's not good for letting your brain go to sleep. So most people will say and agree, I don't sleep because I'm thinking too much. I can't sleep because my, my, my brain won't switch off. I can't sleep because I can't relax. Relaxing physically, I'm sure your body has no problems doing that. You can lie in bed, you can do nothing. You've probably been doing nothing, uh, sorry, something all day. It's the brain. You've got to switch the brain off. Don't overactivate it. Do not overactivate it by stimulating with stupid social media stuff. Let it go. It's fine. No one cares if you like their photo or not. Let it go. You're more important. Get some sleep. Uh, no phone at all for the last hour before you're going to go to sleep. This is also important. Whether you say, oh, I don't like social media, so I don't do social media, but I play Sudoku or I'm um, replying to emails, nothing. The blue light emitting from the screens keeps the brain awake through the eyesight. So for me, there is, this, I'm gonna tap into the next one here and say, I don't have a TV in my room. Now, sometimes there's a TV in my room, but I don't have it on for the last hour before I'm going to bed. It's part of my wind down. If you're one of those people that does happen to need to get onto some sort of computer or a phone through their emails or something, Get the blue blocking glasses at the very least. I have a pair, they're pretty in pink, so I'm not gonna show them to you, but trust me, they work, they just look really bad. Uh, the other one is natural sunlight in the mornings and grounding during the day. I just posted something about grounding today, most people don't understand what that is. Grounding is the most important thing as far as getting bare feet onto ground or soil or sand and making sure you get at least five to 10 minutes of that. We grew up playing, this is how we grew up. Someone just commented on that. Oh, me and my daughter go out there. My daughter loves it. Of course, we all did it. It's extremely important. Read the benefits of that on the post that I posted just below. But sunlight first thing in the morning, real sunlight, not just turning the light on, real sunlight outside will let your body know it's daytime and it will start to regenerate the energy you need for the day. Grounding during the day balances everything because we tend to unbalance things with our thinking and our minds. So this is also important. Uh, stopping um, the... The age old thinking too much and the age old I need to do it now. That kind of thinking, that kind of mindset for me will never allow you to be able to get any good night's sleep because you will always have something going on that you think you should be doing now instead of resting, instead of calming down, instead of going to bed. 
get rid of that I need to do now now get rid of that you have a to-do list you get shit with done as much as you can excuse my language get as much as you can done whatever you can't do and get done don't think I could have done it I should have done. let it go it's fine There's nothing you can do let it go put it on the list for tomorrow put, couldn't have been that important otherwise you got you would have got it done anyway um, I don't also allow personally drifting what I mean by drifting is allowing myself to sort of get sleepy and sort of get a little bit. I don't allow this until I finished everything that I physically need to do for the day. So I'm not going to allow myself to get into a position where I may drift off to sleep or get a little short nap if I still have to get up and do something. Because that small little nap there will actually get your brain switched to get a little boost. Like it's like second gear. So when you get back up to go and put the kids to bed or go and... I don't know, walk the dog in the evening or something. If you had a little bit of drift before that, that getting back up then tells the body that you were not ready to sleep and you then get all of a sudden this massive second wind and off you go again to the middle of the night. Not a good idea. Drifting is cool, but not if you have something else to do after. Get stuff done first, allow the drifting, go to bed. Better off, drift in bed, even better. Uh, record your TV shows. This is something that I've been doing for a very long time. I was one of those first people to get that little box where you're allowed to record your TV shows and watch them back. That way you're not wasting as much time on TV. Fast forward through the ads, don't listen to all the crap that they try and sell you on TV. But at the same time, what it does allow you to do is watch that show at a certain time that allows you to be able to get to bed in time without having to stay awake waiting for that 9.30 show. Record it. Watch that 9.30 show the next day and just keep recording them and always be slightly behind me. You can watch that 9.30 show at 5.30 or 7.30. It's yesterday's show, but who cares? This is what I used to do. I don't watch shows. I watch sport. Same sort of deal. And last but not least, excuse my language, but you just got to relax. <laughs> this is the most important part. Have a warm bath. Don't drink a glass of wine. Alcohol stays in your body for eight hours. Caffeine stays in your body for eight hours. Your body's not necessarily going to switch off up here while you're in your sleep. So you will feel rested from the physical side of being in bed, but the brain doesn't get its time off. The brain's certainly not going to be getting its regenerative sleep between that 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. time slot, which happens to be point number one. So yes, this is my sleep setup. You can comment down below what yours is, if you like mine, if there was two or three points you like, two or three points you want me to elaborate on, up to you, that's fine, that's cool by me. I don't have a problem with that at all. Go for it. Enjoy it. Hope it was good for you. Enjoy your day. Okay, so now I'm going to go back over these things with a little bit more details. The regenerative time from 11 until 5 has been proven multiple times over. They used to run a study where everybody was running the same uh, job, eating the same food and everything, but they were doing everything from a 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. swap. So essentially someone working night shift as such. And they found that the people were working night shift, doing exactly the same thing as far as an hour, sleep, everything, but just doing it in daytime instead of nighttime, died 10 years earlier than the people that were doing everything during the normal daylight and, uh, uh, yeah, and, and, and night light. So there is something towards that 11 and 5 time slot in there where the body understands based on the sun up, sun down, the moon, the, and the tides and the stars and all that kind of stuff. There's a reason why it still exists in the Eastern uh, culture and functional medicine. So for me, this is extremely important. What I love about it is, is this. I feel so much better getting on six hours sleep. And I'll normally sleep eight hours, so an hour before and an hour after. But I make sure that I'm asleep, dead asleep during those. Uh, that that's 11 to 5 times yeah time period the adding nothing to the list i find it extremely hard because most people feel like they need to get as much done as they possibly can in all aspects of life grinding pushing doing more more there's not it's not the best <laughs> less is best they tell you this in 10,000 times but people want to do as much as they can sometimes they take on too much if I'm the guy responsible for the thing and I'm not f uh, feeling so well, I'm not operating at 100%, what's the point of putting all my effort into the thing? The thing gets ripped off and whoever hired me to get the thing done or expects me to get the thing done is going to be a little bummed when I'm not doing it at 100%. I can give 100% but if my glass is already half empty, 
that's only 50% even though I gave it all I had. So adding nothing to the list, you'll find it's just that little regenerative power nap essentially, where you just get to just slow down, reassess, come back, and the nothing part, sometimes when someone calls and says, hey, what are you up to at three? It's like, oh, actually I'm doing nothing. Okay, cool, do you wanna go get a coffee? No, I'm doing nothing, I'm busy. I'm busy doing nothing. Nothing is what I'm doing at that time. Uh, sounds silly, but I'll prioritize my own health and my own wellness before I'll prioritize a cup of coffee. A cup of coffee. So, yeah, adding nothing to the list for me is extremely important, and I suggest you start doing it at whatever time you want. There needs to be a time slot where the brain just slows down and knows that the list of things you're doing is not as important, not as critical as you think it is, because no one's going to die. Things still can get done tomorrow. That email can just be sent the next day. Whatever. People will get over it. It's okay. Your mental sanity, your health, your good energy, and your spirit, and your, spa, your smile will probably make up for that one day late email or whatever it may be. The caffeine. Now, personally, I sleep relatively early and I wind down relatively early. So I have my 12 o'clock slot as the last time I can have coffee. I might have three or four sometimes prior to that. I am awake from around 5.30 or 6 most days, 5.30, 6.30. So I do have a few coffees in there sometimes. I enjoy the process of making my own coffee. It's part of my meditative process in the morning. So I grind my own beans and do all this kind of stuff. I enjoy that slow pour stuff, sometimes French press, blah, 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 blah. I enjoy the process of making coffee more than I enjoy probably drinking it. The drinking part's fun with friends. Um, I do enjoy drinking it for the first the first one, the first cup in the morning, because I mix it with MCT oil, so I get quite a buzz out of that. I don't recommend it for everyone, but it is quite fun. So yeah. I would recommend 2 p.m. for most people. The caffeine will stay in your brain for about eight hours. Therefore, the eight-hour stimulus starts to die down roughly when you're going to bed. Otherwise, if you have it later in the afternoon, that stimulus of the brain shutting down, uh, sorry, the stimulus from the caffeine shutting down in the brain wakes the brain, which is why you can have those disruptive sleeps at around that 12 to 1 or 2 a.m. slot because you had your coffee at 4 or 5 p.m. So, yeah, this is what I found to be a little bit easier for me. The social media thing. Most of us get triggered by social media. I don't really have it, nor do I ever really partake in it. I keep up with little daily news from the social media sites because I don't really watch news, I don't really watch TV news. So I do that, but I'll do it in the morning before and then I'll do it in the evening. So social media for me is something that sort of stops around that six or seven o'clock. I just don't I don't take part in it. Answering a text message is not social media, but flicking through Facebook and sliding through and liking someone's photo, you know, life goes on without it. It went on before, it's going to go on without after it, if it ever dies out. It's just take care of yourself first, your mental health, getting upset, getting pissed off, liking someone's photo, finding out they were here, whatever it may be. It's social, it's not really, okay, they call it social media, but okay, just let it go. In the evenings, let it go. There's nothing you can do about it anyway. It's okay. The day's gone. Go to sleep. One hour before bed, I am not on my phone at all. It's charged and my phone will automatically have that little bedtime icon on an iPhone switched on automatically at 9 p.m. every night. It switches on so no matter what, except for two phone calls that can come from two people in my phone, the phone will not make a noise regardless. It doesn't vibrate, doesn't ring, nothing. After 9 p.m., that's it. Bedtime mode or nighttime mode or something it's called. Do not disturb. I just don't. It doesn't. After night, I don't care. I could be almost falling asleep and I get that little, <laughs> oh crap. And then my head starts thinking, who could that be? What could that be? Is it important? Shit, I'll kill myself in the morning if I find out it wasn't something I could have responded to because it's right there. It just shuts off. And everybody who knows me knows that. So if you want something to do with me, you got to do it before 9 p.m. because my phone will just be shut off at that point. And I recommend you guys do rough, roughly the same thing. You can add emergency contacts in there and they can call you. That's cool. Um, but yeah, this is important. This is relatively important. That thinking needs to wind. It just needs to slow down. And so on the, on the same on the same thing, the, the TV in the bedroom. Nah, nah, don't do that. Don't do that. 
You can watch TV in your bedroom, but what I'm referring to is that nighttime, let the TV go on and fall asleep with the movie going. Don't do that. Your brain's already engaged into what's going on. It's creating the fantasy. It's trying to relive the story. It's trying to relate it to something that you've done. That's why we have interest in the movie or the story, and that's why you've probably chosen that one in the first place. So there is a relative... Uh, equivalent of your brain wanting to watch it versus you wanting to have something on while you fall asleep so even though you've fallen asleep your brain is still being your ears don't switch off your ears are still picking this up and your brain's still playing that story in your mind most of us will have a dream about something that we heard when we, that we heard when the TV was still playing while we actually had our eyes closed this is what we'll dream about because while our eyes are open we realize it's a movie when the eyes are closed the mind still is listening to it and still has rough dreams about something to do with this stuff you have bad dreams probably something happened on that tv when you let it happen you fell asleep but you let the tv show keep going you let it happen that you let that dream happen so yeah turn the tv off when you want to go to bed turn it off um the natural sunlight so as soon as i wake up in most countries when i wake up the sun is up i normally will wake up with the sun as i leave most of my blinds relatively open so that i do get that as an alarm personally i haven't set an alarm in years i have the freedom to be able to do that i understand some people don't but that's okay um if you don't then okay go outside get some straight up sunlight boom <laughs> burn your eyes burn your eyes out i recommend it not sit there with your eyes in the sun but i'm talking about get some nice fresh sunlight bang them out your body will know, okay, it's daytime, I need to activate this, I need to activate this, ta 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 like this. This is extremely important, and I think this is extremely um, shocking to the eyes and to the brain to let your let your body know that this is daylight. We don't want to slowly wake up. We want to, we want to be active, our brains want to be lazy, so letting our brains control us and slowly wake us up, even though you may feel that's better, that's cool. I'm just saying, go outside, take the dog out for a pee on the, go on the ground. Uh, I don't know, maybe you can want to randomly, sorry about that, you can maybe randomly go out and just take the trash out. You could just go out and just, I don't know, just check that the car has been keyed, something. Just find something in your routine to be able to go out and just get a little sunlight, a couple of minutes before you go out. Maybe j boil the jug, walk outside, once around the house, get some sunlight, come back, make your coffee, something like that. Find it inside your routine. And I know it doesn't seem like it's much as far as to do with the slow, <laughs> as far as, uh, sorry, slowing you down. But what it does is it allows your brain to know that the 12 hours of sunlight start when you wake up. So what it does is by the 12 hour mark, it starts to go back down. It knows that you need to be going to sleep again. If you just walk out all of a sudden and your brain doesn't really pick up through the eyesight what's happening and what time you're doing what and when, then yeah, you can have some issues winding down at the end of the day. The other thing with to, with this one is grounding. Try and see if you can get some sun. So if you're going to go out for a walk and get some sun, as I recommend to do that, try and get a little bit of natural ground, even if it's just a little piece of grass somewhere, just stand there barefoot. This is ideally what you want to do. I do mine on the beach in the morning. I don't have to walk via the beach to go to the gym, but I just do. And I, I walk with like you know, slippers. I take my slippers off when I'm on the sand and I put my slippers back and then I go to the gym. I keep it pretty simple. If I'm walking on, even on concrete and I see a little bit of grass there, just walk on the grass, put your, put your feet in the water. All this kind of stuff has a lot of um, positive and negative ions that your body can recognize and can understand and adjust. So this, even though, like I said, grounding during the day, sunlight in the morning, may not seem like it's helping you with your sleep, but it's helping you with your sleep setup, which is the purpose of this video. All the things I do during the day to allow me to sleep better during the night, which then if I get a good night's sleep, allows me to have a much better day the next day and they all accumulate on each other. I'll feel it if I didn't get a good night's sleep and it throws me off for a bit so I feel bad for those who are continuously and consistently not getting good sleep. Um, stop thinking, enjoy the now. Allowing yourself to stop thinking about what you missed out on, stop thinking about what you could have done, but let all this kind of stuff go. The future doesn't exist, the past is not existing either. You are only involved in what is in right now. Right now, this is your position. You are in, the, in bed, you are in your car driving home, you are at the kitchen table cooking dinner, you are wherever you are, you're on the toilet, wherever you are, just enjoy where you are now. Stop thinking about what you could have done before or what you're going to do next. If you're one of these people who forgets what you're going to do next, just put a list, write a list on your phone. I have a, I don't even know how many lists I have. A list of how many lists I have is incredible. 
and I just tick them off as I go. I feel like I'm winning and I also feel like I'm getting something done, but it lets me forget what I just got done. The 10 little things I have to do today, I'm now looking at four of them. Oh, I've only got four to go. Sweet. I did six things already. <laughs> There's plenty of time to go in the day. Shit, I might be able to go shoot some hoops down at the park with Robert later on. Something like that, you know? Let that, th let that stuff go. Okay, don't allow drifting while you still got things to do. This one was hard for me to find in a shorter sentence to say, but <laughs> this is the best I could come up with. Drifting, like falling asleep, getting into those little naughty sort of sleeping. Don't allow them in the evenings unless you know you don't have anything else to do. If you know you've got five things to do, you've got three things to do, and you feel a little sleepy, it's only going to throw you off if you allow that little nod to happen and then stand up and have to go out and finish doing a couple of other things like physical work. Even if it's just going up and down the stairs to go and do X and Y, it's going to wake you up and the brain's going to get into that second gear then you're really gonna to struggle to switch the brain off to go to sleep. If you feel yourself drifting, just go, shit, I've got three things to do. Get them done. That drift will not throw the brain off, but it will help you to go fall asleep a little bit later, uh, an hour or two later, whatever it may be, but, but sleep a lot better later on. This is one of the, the most important keys is not allowing that little power nap, unless it's on purpose. If it's around two o'clock, three o'clock, and a power nap is due, get that, 15 minute power nap and then I set my alarm. If I know it's gonna take me about 10 minutes to fall asleep, I set my alarm for 30 minutes from that time of right now. 30 minute alarm, bang. I don't have an alarm to wake me up. I definitely have an alarm to, I mean in the morning, but I definitely have an alarm to wake me up from a nap. Otherwise, if I'm tired, I'll just sleep another hour, an hour and a half, and then my night's sleep is screwed, 100%. So yeah, power naps are due. If power naps are due, make sure they're done before two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, recording your TV shows, as I said before, I don't watch much TV, but what I do watch is what I want to watch in the times that I have it. I'm not going to set my whole routine out to be able to catch that TV show at 7 o'clock, 8.30, 9 p.m., 10 p.m. even. I like some stuff that's normally on a little bit late in the evenings because there's games that are on for me in another country. So I record those shows and I'll watch them when it's time for me to have those shows watched in probably the next day. So I'm always sort of a day behind, sometimes two days behind, but I can fast forward a one hour show and watch the whole thing in 35 minutes. I can fast forward the half time breaks, I can fast forward all the ads in between. I can make more use of my time catching up with my sports games or my TV shows. But what it also allows me to do is not be able to watch TV late at night. I'm watching a little bit more earlier in the evening or in the afternoon or during my lunch break or whatever it may be. This allows me to be able to get a little bit more production into the falling asleep and letting things go down, letting my body go down. My energy needs to go down, which then leads me into my last point, which is just to relax, let it go. There's nothing you can do about it. I didn't get this done. I didn't get this done. I could have done this better. I should have this one. Fine, fine, fine. Write it down if you need to get something done. Then at least your brain can switch it off because you wrote it down. But just relax. Just let it go. Thinking is what will let you not sleep well. It's the thinking because your body will want the rest, especially if you're training. Consistently training, hell, that body wants to rest all the time. And it's fine. Drink enough water, get some good rest, but you need to let the brain just chill, just relax, switch it off for a little bit. Do that nothing part. If you've got the benefits of being able to add nothing to your list near the end of your day, that chill thing will probably probably work out. Most people disguise that just and relax by saying, I need a bath and I'm gonna have a glass of wine and I'm gonna read the Cosmopolitan magazine or whatever it may be. It doesn't work this way. It doesn't work. The alcohol will stimulate your brain to stay awake. The bath will stimulate your physical body to fall asleep. And then the reading the Cosmopolitan will get your social media brain ticking. And all of a sudden, you're active in the brain with your thinking. Your mind and your brain is awake because caffeine is running through it. But the body is saying, yo, bro, chill. We want to go to sleep. It just, it's contradiction. You end up with just this big conflicting mess. So yeah, these are the points. Regenerative sleep. Adding nothing to the list, no caffeine at a certain time, no social media, no phone one hour before bed, no TVs in the bedroom. Uh, during the evening, I should add that in there. Uh, natural sunlight first thing in the morning, grounding in the afternoon if you can. Stop thinking, enjoy what you're doing right then and there in the moment. Don't allow drifting if you've still got things to do. Uh, record your TV shows and watch them a little bit better uh, for the better timing of your day. 
and just freaking relax. There you go, 12, 13 points, I think, something like that in 25 minutes. Not bad at all. So, this has been my sleep setup. Hope you enjoyed it. See you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.